evening. Welcome to you. Welcome once again. We are here, and um, thank God for bringing us back safely. Hope you had a wonderful evening, and um, it's time to praise the Lord. So as we uh, stand and commence our evening service, let us all um, commence with your team song, and then right after we'll have uh, uh, another hymn, 300, sorry, number 29, Up the Cross. That will be right after her team song. You promised, Lord, that you would work to build a strong and vibrant church. You promised, Lord, that you Hymn number 29, Up the Cross, written by Isaac Watts.
cross where I first saw the light. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity which you've given unto us to be here once again. We thank you, Lord God, because we know that we serve the true and living God today. We thank you for these beautiful hymns of the cross where I first saw the light. Lord, thank you for the cross. We know it was not an easy thing to have sent your son to die for the sins of the world. But we thank you this evening, Lord, when we did not merit that wonderful and matchless grace. In spite of who we are, you sent your son to die for us. So we bless your name this evening. We pray, Lord God, that as we come to the throne of grace this evening, that we will come humble. And ask for forgiveness and that you would forgive us. We ask, Lord God, the God that you'd bless every individual here this evening. For those who are in tune with us via the internet, we thank you, Lord God, also for them, and that you would bless their home and bless their lives. We ask you, Lord God, that you may provide needs wherever the needs may be, but most importantly, that you would provide the spiritual needs of each individual. Pray, Lord God, that you continue to work in our lives, and as the chorus says, you're still working on us. And we pray, Lord God, that we will just uh, let go of self and just let the Holy Spirit rule and reign in our lives for us to be what you want us to continue to be in your name. So we pray, Lord God, that you bless all that will be said and done this evening. Bless the, the man speaker that you prepare for uh, this night. We pray, Lord God, that you give him the clarity of mind and that you give him the words that he may speak unto us this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for just loving us. We thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. We pray, Lord God, for Good News Baptist Church as we continue to pray for a, a, a leader Pray, Lord God, that you continue to work on that individual. Only you knows who that person is. And so, Lord God, we'll work diligently and do the best of our abilities that we would be able to uh, make the decision when the time arrives. You just bless your name, have your will on your way as we continue to serve you this evening. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We'll have uh, another hymn that's hymn 319, 319, just the closer walk with the 319. Thank you. 
Just the closer walk with thee. And um, that should be your desire every day. All right, let us do one more hymn, and then right after we'll have the message for this evening. Hymn 174, My Jesus, I Love Thee. 174. Amen. Beautiful hymns. Thank God for those men who wrote those songs inspired by God's love and mercy. 
Thank you so much. And now we'll have the message by Brother Martin for this evening. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thee thanks. We give thee thanks, Lord, for this opportunity that we will ask you to teach us. Father, help me, the speaker, this evening. Speak through me. Help me to say, thus says the Lord. Help me to know my weakness, Lord. Help me to know your strength, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to take a different, forgive me for using the word high. It should always be E. But anyway, I'm going to take a different approach towards preaching this lesson. I want the first approach is to see things as man sees God's words. And then we are going to pray and ask God to teach us. Because especially men who has their masters and their doctorate, they think they understand God's words. And so they do not ask God verse by verse, line by line, or chapter by chapter. And say, so they are always feeding us literally. We are not getting the spiritual food. So therefore, we grow literally, but we don't grow spiritually. If you think we grow spiritually, have you ever seen a body there and the preacher asks God to raise that man. No. He said he believed in Jesus. And he knows Jesus can do it. But he never asks Jesus. Because there is a disconnect between man and God. Before I go to this lesson, I give you some highlights on man. My experience. One of my roommates, the senior man, I said to him, say, Marsh, I have psychology testing and I don't finish. He said, Riley, you're a psychologist, man. Well, I'm going to do the paper, man. So I follow Marsh, man. And I went and I Right, man. So when Mrs. Yang came back with the result, she handed out all the papers. And she said, come here, Riley. She said, I can't give you more than 70. Whenever you are doing this, you have to quote the book that you get it from and the heart. Do you wish to go back and do it? I said, no, miss, I'll, I'll take the 70. Another student, a friend of mine that I come across, he said, Riley, the lecturer, that, that lecturer, him full of matter, but the matter wrong. And so that is how we as men feel. We feel like because we are at college, we know more than the lecturer. It's the same thing. In the church, we see spirituality in a different way than how God sees. One of the ways that we see spirituality is how often we come to church. Number two, how popular you are. And number three, your wealth. Respect is given to that man, he is rich. And also, our denomination. The Adventist man said we get it wrong. You know, see, even the day of worship, they get it wrong. 
the Pentecostal man say, you know, see, them not have the fire, and we have the fire. And there is always a disconnect from God. So tonight we are going to look at a topic. We have been doing the pillars of faith. And we have done six of them. Remember, there are eight pillars of faith. And we have to know them. It is an indication of the behavior of a saved individual. If you can't see these pillars within the individual, it doesn't matter if he's the preacher or the teacher. It has to be seen. You have to grow in the faith, the pillars of faith. Another way of looking at it is if you don't have one of these pillars, you can't stand up strong, you're weak, and maybe you don't have none. And so we have seen the eight pillars of faith. The first one is genuine faith. The second one, obedience. The third one, humility. The fourth one, selfless love. The fifth one, forgiveness. And tonight, we are going to do number six, self-discipline. And we have two more to go, gratitude and worship. These attributes or characteristics has to be seen in a saved individual. If you don't have it, ask Jesus. But this one that we are going to do tonight, it's one of the most difficult one. Believe me. Self-discipline. Why is it so difficult? It is because of the prefix self. It throws off altogether. Self-discipline. That means we have discipline within ourselves. Is it true? And so because of that prefix, we get it all wrong. And we are going to see how we see it, how the world sees it. Because in most cases, we see things how the world sees it. How they feed us. That's how we eat. That's how we grow. And so, we tend not to focus on these traits, but rather to focus on church attendance, business, participation, position, wealth, race, and denomination, instead of focusing on the pillars so that we can know if we are disconnected from our master. Because sometimes we feel like we are connected, you know, but we are not connected. And that is why we have sorrows and griefs, etc., etc., etc. God is always saying to us, come closer to me. Acknowledge my Holy Spirit so that we can direct you. However, tonight we are going to look at self-discipline. To me, it is the most difficult pillar to understand. Why? The prefix self relates to yourself. Example, self-care. Me taking care of myself, you know. Meaning, taking care of yourself. Number two, self-motivation. It means driven by one's own desire and ambition. And then we have one here that is going to blow us, blow us out of the water. Self-made man. You ever hear a man say, I'm self-made? What is he saying? We will soon see what he is saying. It means a man who have become successful and rich through their effort, especially 
if they started life without money, education, or higher social status. But who will start with money? We came into this world with nothing. So how is he going to say he is self-made? He missed the point. He missed the point totally. I am a self-made man because he has a big house. He drives a nice car and he has few millions in the bank. He said he is self-made. However, he is not self-made. And then we come across self-awareness. It is the ability to tune into your feelings, thought, and action. Self-awareness also means being able to recognize how others see you. People who are self-aware recognize their strength and their challenges. And that is how the world sees things. And that is how we understand things. With that said, it can be seen from the prefix self that we can achieve things through ourselves because we give ourselves life. Don't? We give ourselves life. So therefore, it is us. And we tend to beat the chest the shoulder of us. We are doing well. And so we don't really recognize God and ask God. We think we are strong, yet we are weak. And so you can see self-discipline here. It's not really easy understood. However, Jesus is spiritual man is the most self-disciplined individual we will ever come across. And so, we are going to ask him to teach us. And so let us go in prayer. Father, we give thee thanks for you, Jesus. You came to this earth, Lord, and you have taught us in all ways. You taught us suffering, pain, agony. And you have done it all for us. And tonight, Lord, we are going to ask you to teach us self-discipline. Because you are the most self-disciplined individual we have ever come across, Lord. And so you know it. So teach us, Lord. Um, could you stand? Jesus is going to teach. And so we understand what we meant by self-discipline. And I think we hold it. And we hold it tight. The child now is not disciplined. Now is self-discipline. Now is study. Now is doing work. And we hold it that way. The man beating chest and say, I'm self-made, not recognizing God. But Jesus, the teacher, is going to teach us. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 4. Whenever you read, reach Matthew chapter 4, you say, hey, Amen. Amen. So Jesus is going to teach now. And we are going to pick it after he has given us his words. We are going to ask him to interpret it for, he, for us. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of Man, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up into the holy place, and seated him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship thee. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee in Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. May the Lord bless the reading of those words. Have a seat. Amen. And so the first thing we see there. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afraid and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, I stop there. And so you see self-discipline is overcoming temptation. That's the first point we see there. If you cannot overcome the temptation, you are not self-disciplined. You know that you have a schoolwork to do your homework, supposed to give up tomorrow. You have to overcome the temptation of sleeping. And playing outside, you have to come inside and get the work done. Overcoming temptation. And this is very, very important because in most cases, this temptation overcomes us at all times. That is why you have gangs, you are money boy. Overcoming temptation. So if you don't overcome those temptations, you are not disciplined. You can't say you are self-disciplined. You understand? So Jesus' teaching is always different from how we see things. Check him out. He will lead you to the truth. That's the first thing that we see. Overcoming temptation. And there are many, many temptations. That is why a man divorced. Hence is some lady that didn't feel like a little prettier than the one he has. Or she has some more money than Joanne. Overcoming temptations. So there is nothing about ourself but self-discipline. It is God who has planted that desire in us through the Holy Spirit in order for us to overcome. Let us look further. And when the tempter came to him, and so you see, the devil is always a tempter. The devil is always a tempter. And because of that, we are not satisfied with the position that we are in. We are always aspiring to get more of whatever it is. If you have land, you want more land. If you have money, you want more money. If you have girls, you want more girls. Fleshly desires, not spiritual. Jesus' teaching is spiritual. And you have to ask him. Line by line. Look how he set up the Bible. Line, verse, chapter. And in all of these, he set out principles. So don't bother going at Genesis or Exodus with Moses and then jump to Job. Taking the principles that Jesus is laying out before you. Or you will always be at the same position. Meanwhile, you need spiritual growth. 
You read the line and you don't understand it? Ask him man. He said, ask. And it shall be given. He said, seek. And you shall find. He said, knock. And it shall be open unto you. Jesus. That spirit, Jesus. And that spirit is a powerful spirit. Yeah? If you come across that spirit, you wonder. You sleep in your bed. And you see how oh, good God oh, is to you. And sometimes your wife says, what happened? You say nothing. But you reflect some things that God has done for you that is only God could do it. Let me give you a testimony. At my second year in college, money ran out. So before I went to college, I sold one of my friends my bike. CB 200. He didn't finish pay off for it, so I said, Well, you know, I'm going to check either. And so I head to the country and I saw Keeble in the village with a police officer. Police officer, dangerous boy. He has killed a lot of criminals in the area. Don't call his name. And so I was talking to Kibo. And um, Kibo said, Martin, you don't have the money now, no man. You tell me get the money now with his sister, that is my mother, father, sister. And the police guy said, Will you come here? I the boy. What? What? And another boy um, over the train line, Bunny. So you know, see Martin and the guy talking. He's not trouble, yo. Anyway, I left. I had to cross a stream. I crossed the stream and when I go around the corner, the Holy Spirit said to me, say, climb up on the bank. And I said, Father, hold me down about me. He said, go over here. So I run. And I go over there and I run up on the bank. And he said, stay still. And when I look over, I saw a lady and her daughter like they want to fight. And I said, Father, is that you showing me? Stay still. Little bit after, I hear the police guy come and say, You see Martin pass here? And the guy said, No. And then, You know, see Martin pass here? That I am so close to him. God's protection. And after he was gone, God said, Come off the road. Go on the train line. You walk on the train line. And we are the train line. Meet back the other road. There was a minibus coming, and I took it. My God, God's protection is powerful. The spirit is real. If you have not come across it, ask him, man. Ask him diligently. Ask him. So let us continue here, because we think we are self-disciplined. And so Jesus is teaching us little by little. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You think you understand what God said there? There is two types of bread. The literal bread and the spiritual bread. The literal bread will let you grow, but not spiritually. It is the other bread, the word of God. That's the bread that allows you to grow spiritually. And so it is very important. You dig in this. It doesn't matter what preacher say. You dig in this for yourself. And communicate with the Holy Spirit. That is where you are going to get the full knowledge of this. That is why you have doctrines. You know. As I tell you, the Pentecostal said, Dear way is it? Dear way is the right way. Is the fire. Watch them. And cool. Then the devil take him up into an holy place and set him in a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, 
If thou be his son, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at thy time thou shalt thou dash thy foot against a stone. Look what Jesus said unto him. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so you will see self-discipline is overcoming temptation through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit plays something in us. You know? So it's not we are for ourselves overcoming. It is he that is working in us in order for us to overcome. And so, when we think of self-discipline, we think of Jesus directing us, empowering us to overcome our adversities. Very, very important. And so the world sees things in a different light at all time than how Jesus, the spiritual man, sees things. Remember, you know, he is the one that is born of the spirit. We are only born again. The spiritual book, he teaches it. And every man can think they know it because they can interpret it in a literal way. Not in a spiritual way, but the spiritual power there interpret this for us. So let us continue. Um, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so, our temptation, <coughs> in order for us to overcome that temptation, it is through reading God's word, trusting God's words. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee in Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. And so, we are not to worship nothing else but the Lord. Not the pretty car. Wash my car for me, no man, you know. It can dirty sometime. Worship nothing. Worship not the house that you live in, the big pretty house. Worship not the bank account. Worship not your wife. Worship not your husband. Worship the Lord thy God. Father, we give thee thanks for your words. Father, we give thee thanks for your teaching, Lord. Father, help us. If there is an unsafe individual here that is not self-motivated or self-aware of their situation, that they do not come to the knowledge of saving grace, May you empower that individual with your Holy Spirit, Jesus. Father, help us to call upon you. You say you will answer us. And you will show us great and mighty things. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, um, Brother Martin. Lead not to temptation, for leading is what? Leading is sin. And um, as the, um, Brother Martin have said, the only way we can fight that is through self-discipline. That is very important. We're lacking a, a lot of that individually um, in so many ways. But um, God can help us to overcome and help us to have that self-discipline. But we have to be willing to make that sacrifice. Shall we stand as we have an invitation hymn? Uh, hymn number 252, if you're here this evening and um, you have not trusted Christ, there's an opportunity which we always give that you can give yourself to Christ, give yourself to God, and as we sing the song, the invitation is open. 252, wider than snow, you may think that you're the worst of the worst, but as we said, God is always waiting patiently for those because he loves them. He loves us. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. Lord 
Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want Thee forever to live in my soul. Cast out every fall, no wash me and I. May be seated, and now Brother Ben will come and bring us the announcement for the week. Good evening. It's good to be back out in the house of the Lord and listen to some announcement and some prayer requests. And as uh, the prayer request for Sister Felicita is still going, and. Uh, um, Brother Kevin also, uh, we ask you to continue to remember to pray for our brothers and sisters. There's a lot of, uh, of others that are in the bulletin. Uh, you have a bulletin, then you have someone to pray for, okay? And um, just please rem remember that today there are two birthdays, and we have um, uh, Sister Dinah and Dinah Clark and also Leela General. Please remember, there are two ladies, two very important ladies in our church. Actually, all ladies are important in our church. And not just the ladies, but boys and girls and men. All of us are important in the sight of God. Keep each, and each other in prayer. But please remember that also on the 17th of March, we have Sister Teresita also. We'll be having birthdays. And also Anita Fawcett on the 17th, look like they decide to pair up, but uh, Ms. Dionia, I'm sorry that if no one else will accompany you, you are alone on the 18th, on the 19th, so um, I'm not sure if uh, maybe there are some who are not on the bulletin, uh, is, you have it as a secret, and um, we know that this morning there was someone else um, that uh, I think Pastor Lupito also, uh, well, it's his birthday, and please you all can say hi to him and greet him in the name of Jesus, and uh, I pray that God will continue to bless his ministry. It's very, very vital, very important. Okay, at this time, we ask the usher to please come. I don't finish the announcement yet, but um, I ask the ushers to please come, because we want to say certain things that um, is vital on the air, so you know that we remember you, you are important to us, and we love you, and we want to 
uplift each and every one. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that it's you who decide, O oh God, to look down on the human race and lift, lift us up. O oh God, um, bring us to yourself. Give us a gift that only you can give. Give us life that only you is in your hand. Give us hope and grace and eternal life because you are eternal God. We thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord, that you will be doing and you are doing in the life of each and every one of us today, O oh God. Help us to understand, Lord, that we are made in your likeness. Lord, we are a triune being also, Lord. You love us and you make us, O oh God, and you want us to serve you, Lord. Help us to continue digging into your word to learn of you, O oh God, because they are great treasure in your word. We ask you, Lord, that as we give back some what you have given unto us, Lord, that you will bless us, that you will provide for us, that you will increase, Lord, our finance, O oh God, so that we can uh, be better able to worship and to serve you in giving. Lord, we know, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. Help us, Lord, as we give that we'll give. We'll worship, Lord, you by giving cheerfully. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you will lift us up, O oh God, those if there are any that is discouraged, O oh God, at this time, Lord, we are asking you, Lord, to lift, lift and, and set on high, on above, Lord, keep our affection, Lord, our, our aim, our goal on things above and not on things here on earth, O oh God. Lord, we pray for those that have been birthday this week. We pray for especially those today, O oh God, Sister General, O oh God, and Sister Clark, O oh God. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them, that you will Bless their family, Lord, that you will do great work spiritually, Lord, in their life. Lord, we ask you continue to pray for Felicita, O oh God, that you do mighty and wondrous, wondrous things in her life also, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that there is none greater than you, O oh God. There is none that can really heal apart from you. And we are thanking you for what you are going to do or what you are doing right now at this present moment in the life of her, O oh God. And what you are doing, Lord, in the life of this church, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you will help us, Lord, as we come together, Lord, that we'll come in love, that we'll come, come, Lord, expecting a blessing and come uh, ready, prepare, oh God, to be a blessing to someone, Lord. Bless us as we go, uh, as we, we, we take the offering, Lord, as we ask for those that may not have, Lord. Again, Lord, we ask you to bless them, to increase their faith, increase their, their finance, increase, Lord, the the love for you, O oh God, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.